Hello students, warm welcome to all of you. Today we are going to discuss 8th chapter in our grade 9 CBSC curriculum that is quadrilaterals. Before we start quadrilaterals topic, what are all you learnt previously in the concept of plane geometry especially? In our grade 9, we have several concepts related to plane geometry. They are introduction to Euclid geometry and then lines and angles and then triangles and now quadrilaterals. In the concept of triangles, we discussed various types of triangles as well as what are congruence properties of triangles and uh, about different types of polygons also. So, in this module, what do you mean by a quadrilateral and how many types of quadrilaterals are there and what are those properties and uh, what are all the theorems given in our CBSC curriculum based on quadrilaterals properties, right? Fine. So, first of all, what do you mean by a quadrilateral? Then definitely we need to think about what do you mean by a polygon. So, since we already discussed about a polygon that a polygon is a simple closed figure bounded by line segments. According to the number of line segments, you will giving a names of that particular quadrilateral or that particular triangle or that particular pentagon, hexagon, whatever it is. So, simply that particular polygon. So, according to the definition of a quadrilateral, quadrilateral, the name itself says that it has four line segments. So, quadri is nothing but four. Okay? So, a quadrilateral means a polygon with four sides is said to be a quadrilateral. Otherwise, a simple closed figure bounded by four line segments is said to be quadrilateral. Anything is fine. Now, let us try to understand what are types of quadrilaterals. The name of the topic here is quadrilaterals. Quadrilaterals, right? So, a quadrilateral is a polygon with four sides. Otherwise, a quadrilateral is a simple closed figure bounded by four line segments is said to be a quadrilateral. Now, let us try to understand what are different types of quadrilaterals, right? See, if you come across quadrilaterals, because you heard right, uh, you are hearing from right from, you know, 7th grade, 6th grade onwards, different, different types of quadrilaterals. But let us try to understand quadrilaterals in a particular order, so that you can remember them for a long time as well as you can connect from one quadrilateral to other quadrilateral as along with their properties, right? See, if you consider a quadrilateral, this is one quadrilateral. I would not say that this is one kind of quadrilateral, it is simply a quadrilateral. In this quadrilateral, let us name the vertices of the quadrilateral A, B, C, D, A, B, C, D. A, B, C, D are called vertices of the quadrilateral and uh, this is what is the combination of two rays you can call them as, but this is the combination of B, A as well as D, A. So, that what do you call this particular combination is said to be an angle. So, that this is one of the angles and this is one of the angles and this is one of the angles and this is one of the angles. It means there are totally four angles for a quadrilateral as well as if you observe there are opposite vertices as well as adjacent vertices are there. For example, if I consider A, what are the adjacent vertices to A? Adjacent vertices are nothing but what? The vertex along with the, its arm. Okay? So, this is one of the arms. So, this is one of the vertex and this is one of the arm, so this is one of the vertex. So, these two arms having the vertices B and D, that is why B and D are said to be adjacent vertices as well as for angle A, they are said to be adjacent angles also. 
if these two are adjacent then what do you call this c for a which is non adjacent vertex so if it is non adjacent vertex then in this particular in this particular quadrilateral you can call this as opposite angle to a opposite angle to a so opposite angle is nothing but these two are called adjacent angles that's why this is one of the leftover angle that is why it is called opposite angle to a right this is what also called as non adjacent angle and now if i join a and c if i join a and c what do you call this line segment ac that line segment ac is called a diagonal how do you define a diagonal now my question here is what do you mean by a diagonal diagonal of a quadrilateral or diagonal of a pentagon or diagonal of a hexagon whatever it is diagonal of a polygon what do you mean by diagonal can i define a diagonal as the line segment joining two opposite vertices is said to be a diagonal will you agree with my definition but i do not agree with my definition you know why since it is a quadrilateral that is why in this quadrilateral for any particular vertex there are two adjacent vertices and only one opposite vertex but if i take one pentagon if i take one pentagon this is one pentagon right in this pentagon if you observe this is one of the vertex another vertex another vertex another vertex another vertex right suppose if i take a if i take a then what are the adjacent vertices to a adjacent vertices are b as well as e or adjacent vertex adjacent vertices to a then what are the other two vertices c as well as d these two are there then what do you call those c and d can you call them as opposite vertices two opposite vertices no you cannot call then what do you call them they are non adjacent vertices what do you call them they are non adjacent vertices so you can join a and c as well as you can join a and d also but you cannot join a b as well as a e why because they were already joined they are a part of the sides of that particular polygon so then here the two line segments so obtained are the line segment joining two non adjacent vertices these line segments formed by joining two non adjacent vertices is said to be a diagonal so that when you define a diagonal please be very careful that diagonal is the line segment formed by joining two non adjacent vertices but you should not say that two opposite vertices two non adjacent vertices see here for a d and e are adjacent so this is only the non adjacent vertex of course it can be opposite to that or non opposite to that does not matter but it should not be a non it should not be adjacent vertex therefore how do you define a diagonal a diagonal is a line segment formed by joining any two non adjacent vertices is said to be a diagonal now you can form so many number of diagonals as per the number of sides of the polygon see in our polygon what is this polygon it's a quadrilateral in quadrilateral we can form ac as one diagonal and we can form bd is one more diagonal right so there therefore there are two diagonals in a quadrilateral and there are four sides in a quadrilateral four vertices in a quadrilateral four angles in a quadrilateral they are basic parts of a quadrilateral now we are going to define the types of quadrilaterals please please do remember what do you mean by a diagonal i repeat a diagonal is a line segment formed by joining any two non adjacent vertices of a polygon is said to be a diagonal right so let us try to understand what are different types of quadrilaterals right suppose if i have a quadrilateral in which one pair of opposite sides in which one pair of opposite sides are parallel in this quadrilateral one pair of opposite sides are parallel 
and here I am drawing one more quadrilateral. So, in this quadrilateral also one pair of adjacent sides sorry one pair of opposite sides are parallel. So, in any quadrilateral like A, B, C, D, P, Q, R, S, in these two quadrilaterals consider A, B, C, D or consider P, Q, R, S, you can identify one pair of opposite sides are parallel. If you identify one pair of opposite sides are parallel in any quadrilateral, then you can call that quadrilateral as a trapezium. What do you call that? Trapezium. So, trapezium is a quadrilateral in which one pair of opposite sides are parallel, in which one pair of opposite sides are parallel. I am not telling that one pair of opposite sides are only parallel, one pair of opposite sides are parallel then it is said to be a trapezium. See one pair of opposite sides are parallel, what about the other pair? Other pair of opposite sides may or may not be parallel, that does not matter, may be parallel, may not be parallel, but if you identify one pair of opposite sides are parallel, then it is said to be a trapezium. See A, B, C, D is a trapezium, P, Q, R, S is a trapezium. Let us try to understand what are the properties of the trapezium. See coming to the sides, here A, B and C, D both are parallel only, but we do not know whether they are equal or not. So, that we should not conclude that one pair of opposite sides are parallel as well as equal. No, we do not know that, but we know one pair of opposite sides are parallel, that is it. Okay? And coming to this A, B, C, D trapezium particularly, since A, B and C, D both are parallel, can we consider this A, D as transversal? Yes, of course. If this is a transversal, then what do you call this angle and this angle? These two angles are said to be co-interior angles as we already discussed about the transversal properties of parallel lines. See, if AB is parallel to CD, then you can say AD as a transversal. If AD is transversal, angle A and angle D are said to be co-interior angles. What do you mean by co-interior angles? Their sum is going to be 180 degrees. See, these two are one pair of co angles. Can you identify another pair of co angles? Yes. So, this is one as well as this is one. Okay? These two are another pair of co angles. Therefore, in trapezium, in trapezium A, B, C, D, in which A, B parallel to C, D, A, B parallel to C, D, then we can say that angle A plus angle D is equal to angle B plus angle C is equal to 180 degrees. This is what one of the very important property of trapezium. And apart from this, we do not have much properties which are very really interesting properties of trapezium. Understand? See, angle A plus angle D is 180, angle B plus angle C is only equal to 180. But we do not know whether diagonals are equal or not or diagonals bisect each other or not, we do not have any proper information regarding this. So, that is why in trapezium A, B, C, D, if A, B parallel to C, D, then angle A plus angle D is equal to angle B plus angle C is equal to 180 degrees. See here A, C and B, D may not be equal and A, C and B, D may not bisect each other. So, that is what about trapezium. So, finally, a trapezium is a quadrilateral in which one pair of opposite sides are parallel, right? So, coming to the next quadrilateral. So, what is the next quadrilateral here? The next quadrilateral is going to be, see here in trapezium we discussed about one pair of opposite sides are parallel. Here, if both the pairs of opposite sides are parallel, then what will happen? I am going to draw one more quadrilateral here. See here in this quadrilateral, both the pairs of opposite sides are parallel, means this side is parallel to this side and this side is parallel to this side. Let us name this quadrilateral is A, B, C, D, right? So, in this quadrilateral A, B, C, D, both the pairs of opposite sides are parallel, A, B parallel to D, C as well as A, D parallel to B, C, got it? So, can you call this quadrilateral basically a trapezium? Yes, of course, you can call it as a trapezium because in trapezium one pair of opposite sides are parallel. 
here we you can identify one pair of opposite sides right yes you can call this as a trapezium but in addition to that we have other pair of opposite sides also parallel other pair of opposite sides also parallel then what do you call this quadrilateral a quadrilateral in which both the pairs of opposite sides are parallel then it is said to be a parallelogram what do you call that a parallelogram so a parallelogram means if both the pairs of opposite sides are parallel then the quadrilateral is said to be a parallelogram please do remember that it is very important property it is very important quadrilateral we frequently come across these quadrilaterals in many concepts so, so that is why you will have to remember the properties of parallelogram as well as the definition of a parallelogram also right so according to the definition of parallelogram a quadrilateral in which both the pairs of opposite sides are parallel then it is said to be a parallelogram so in this parallelogram let us try to understand see these two are parallel so that these two angles are said to be co interior angles since these two are co interior let it be x and let it be y okay can i say that x plus y is equal to 180 degrees correct okay fine and then uh, let us see these two are also parallel right these two also parallel and these two are also parallel if these two are parallel let it be some z okay we know that ad is parallel to bc if ad parallel to bc can we call this ab as transversal obviously so if this is transversal can we say that y and z are co interior angles absolutely so that y plus z is also equal to 180 degrees from this information we can say that x plus y is equal to y plus z if x plus y is equal to y plus z what can you infer about this you can say that x is equal to z x is equal to z means what this angle and this angle both are equal right so if these two angles are equal then in the same way you can say that these two angles also equal right angle y is equal to angle z what does it mean it means in a parallelogram opposite angles are equal please do remember this in a quadrilateral opposite angles are equal a b c d is a quadrilateral then definitely angle a is equal to angle c and angle b is equal to angle d right this is one of the very important property of parallelogram they are opposite angles are equal right so you can say that opposite angles are equal and coming to the second property of this parallelogram what is the second property of parallelogram uh, you know very well about congruence properties of triangles right so let me draw this again i am drawing this again just for our convenience let it be suppose a b c d right this is what is the diagonal of this quadrilateral diagonal of a parallelogram see in this we already know that this angle is equal to this angle okay it was already done these two angles are equal and then if you observe these two are parallel lines can we consider this one as a transversal if this is a transversal can we call this angle is equal to this angle right so these two angles are equal if these two angles are equal why not these two angles these two angles also equal right once you observe this triangle and this triangle in these two triangles this angle is equal to this angle this side is equal to that side only because that is the common side for both the two triangles and this angle is equal to this angle so by a s a congruence triangle a b c is congruent to c d a right if two triangles are congruent then by c p c t we can say that a b is equal to c d and a d is equal to b c so what does it mean it means opposite sides are equal in a parallelogram did you understand opposite sides are equal in a parallelogram so in a parallelogram opposite sides are parallel both the pairs of opposite sides are parallel as per the definition and then 
we proved that opposite angles also equal and then we proved that opposite sides also equal. So, these are very important properties of parallelogram and one more very important thing here is that is the second property, first property, second property over. Now, coming to the third property, that third property is for example, you have both the diagonals, okay. See, this is A, B, C, D in this quadrilateral A, B, C, D and moreover what it is? It is parallelogram, right? In this parallelogram A, B, C, D, suppose if I draw both the diagonals. So, this is one diagonal and this is one more diagonal. Let us consider the point of intersection of the diagonals is equal to O. Now, I just want to observe this triangle and this triangle. What kind of triangles both are? If you observe these two triangles, this angle is equal to this angle and this angle is equal to this angle, right? This angle is equal to this angle, sorry. So, now can we say these two triangles are congruent triangles by same property A, S, A property, right? So, since these two triangles are congruent by C, P, C, D, you can say that this part is equal to this part and this part is equal to this part. So, what are we getting here now? we are getting one very, very important property of parallelogram regarding diagonals that is A O is equal to O C and B O is equal to O D. It means, it means diagonals of a parallelogram bisect each other. It means A O is equal to O C means O is the midpoint of A C. B O is equal to O D it means O is the midpoint of B C right? O is the midpoint of B D. Therefore, A O is equal to O C, B O is equal to O D means diagonals bisect each other in a parallelogram. These three are very important properties of parallelogram that you everybody has to remember. I repeat once again about the parallelogram. A parallelogram is a quadrilateral in which both the pairs of opposite sides are parallel and coming to the properties of the parallelogram, in parallelogram opposite angles are equal opposite sides also equal and diagonals bisect each other, diagonals bisect each other, but we cannot say whether both the diagonals are same or not, okay. So, in a parallelogram diagonals bisect each other and opposite angles are equal and opposite sides also equal. Hope you understand about parallelogram. Thank you.